Welcome back to Saving Sunderland. Not so live anymore, so I've made the decision that I won't be live streaming pretty much for the foreseeable future. Just too many issues and hiccups technically, and uh, it doesn't really fit around the lifestyle that I'm currently operating in. So I'm going to take Saving Sunderland to a VOD format, so it will be video on demand content from now on. I will still be doing it like a live stream. I will still be showing you every single game and showing you the interesting bits in between. But uh, there will be will be very, very much a long form content compared to what I usually put out in terms of Yo-Yo Man and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, we're going to continue with the Sunland save. Uh, we are getting towards the back end of our first season in the Premier League. We've got Leeds United coming up next in the FA Cup fifth round. And if you are unaware, uh, this is our first season in the Prem. We got promoted first in League One, first in the Championship. And now, of course, we are in the Premier League. We are currently sitting... In fifth position, in a pretty decent position as well. Level on points with Manchester City in fourth. And uh, if we were able to get Champions League football by some miracle, it would be absolutely fantastic. So as I said, the next game is against Leeds. So if nothing happens between now and then, I will see you there. Esposito just casually winning the Young Player of the Month award for February. He acknowledges the Sunderland effect. We must be one of his favourite clubs. Uh <laughs> Personal manager, favourite personnel, myself, favourite club, Sunderland. I need to make this sign in permanent somehow. I really, really do. Um, but valued at 24.5 million, 4.5 star, 5 star. It's going to be difficult to convince Inter Milan to let him go. But we'll see what we can do in the summer. Um, hopefully, we can make that deal happen. So, in terms of today's lineup, we are going to go pretty much full strength against Leeds United. They are in the Championship, so we should have the advantage there. But uh, that's never a guarantee. We're playing a uh, standard 4-1-4-1 formation. Jack Butland in goal. Nissan Christensen, Perez, Benjamin Clark, Munoz in the defence. George Dobson and Jakobsen in the centre of the park with Abdul Kadir Omar, Sergio Gomez, Oliver Batista Maia in behind Sebastiano Esposito. Let's get to kick off. First highlight of the game, Batista Maia with a free kick. It is clear by Leeds and it looks like they're going to count it down the left. But thankfully, George Dobson is on hand to win the ball back. Munoz coming down this left-hand side now. He gets past his man. He's in the box and he goes for goal. I'm sick of telling me wing-backs not to shoot, but they never listen. Another highlight now. Ten minutes in. It's Leeds who are on the attack this time. The ball is played over the top. We do manage to get it clear and send away Esposito down this left-hand side. This is a little bit too fast. We will slow it down just a bit. A little bit. Tista Maia plays it in. And Abdul Kadir Omar's header is easily saved by the Leeds United goalkeeper. Oh, they're on the counter. Ikigami's He's in behind. Jack Butland with a comfortable save. Oh, I've missed a goal. Of course I have. It was a corner kick. Batista Mayo played it in. And Nehuan Perez gets his head on it and puts us 1-0 up. 16 minutes in. It's a ball played in the front post. He gets his head on it to the back post. And the keeper can do nothing about that one. 31 minutes gone. We have ourselves another highlight. Matthias Jakobsen picking up the ball in the centre of the park. It is fed to Munoz on the left. And he completely does his man now. That was brilliant. He gets past Harrison. He's in the box. I mean, if only he could finish. Another corner though, Batista Maia plays it in. We don't manage to get our head on her at this time, but it did. the ball is still alive. George Dobson plays it back out to Oliver. Uh, the cross is poor. Back to Dobson. Oh, is this going to... Nah, it's going to fizzle out. Only five minutes remaining of this first half. Leeds United are on the attack. And Igagami finds Adam Messina on his left-hand side. Can we get the challenge? And we can't. They're in the box. George Dobson, risky sliding challenge there. And... Mehdi Taremi gets his 21st goal of the season for Leeds United and levels things up with only four minutes to go of the first half. Hugely disappointing that. We have been dominating the game going by the match stats and uh, we, should, we shouldn't be in this position going into halftime, but we are. Sunderland won, Leeds United won. I'm not happy with your performance, boys. Get it back out there and get us the win. 25 minutes left on the clock. The second half has started pretty slowly, but we have our first highlight and it's Leeds United in possession, Messina finds Medi on this right-hand side. He loses out to Munoz, but keeps the ball while whipped in. And uh, Mishiru Ikegami gets his fourth goal of the season. And we are now 2-1 down. Absolutely ridiculous. Come on, boys. Get a goal back. Sergio Gomez whips it in. It's cleared. Jakobsen's there. We equalise almost immediately. His sixth goal of the season from central midfield. Another goal from a corner. They really have been integral to our goal-scoring capabilities this season. And we need another. With only 15 minutes remaining, and we will look to make some changes. We'll bring on Philip Marchinski on that left-hand side. We'll bring on Bally Mumba at right-back. And we'll bring on Felix Correa on the right-hand side of midfield. Come on, boys. 
Time is ticking away and it doesn't look like either side is going to be a oh, corner. Sergio Gomez plays it in. It's cleared by Leeds United, but George Dobson is the first man to it. He loses out to Moy Gomez. And this is going to be the counter-attack of dreams for Leeds United. Igigami's in behind. Thankfully, it was a poor finish. And there we have at the end of the first, uh, the 90 minutes, a complete domination by us, but Sunderland 2, Leeds United 2. Let's kick off for extra time. We will look to take off Philippe Marchinski. We'll put Esposito out on that left-hand side and we'll bring on Lewis Montanillo to play it up top. This is not what we need. We've got three days in between this match and the match that's coming up next, which is Newcastle United away from home. We could have done without this extra time. We'll go for goal again. George Dobson picks it up, drives to the right-hand side, plays it back to Bally Mumba. Come on, Bally. Oh, he's brought down in the box. That is a penalty kick, if ever I have saw one. Who's going to be the man to take it? It's got to be Esposito. Let's have a look. It is Sebastiano Esposito. Can he put us 3-2 in front? He can't. Uh-huh. This game's not going to go away. I can tell already. Sergio Gomez whips in the corner. Oh, Perez. And there's half time and extra time. We'll kick back off for the second half. Can we make another sub? I don't think we can. No, we can't. It's only for, uh, one extra sub for extra time. Munoz plays down the left-hand side for Gomez. The ball is whipped in and easily claimed. We work the ball back through the defence to the left-hand side for Esposito. Um... I mean, El Passan is definitely becoming a little bit more laboured. Sergio Gomez to Munoz. Back to Benjamin Clark. There's your pass there. He plays it to Gomez. He switches the flank to Bal... Ugh. Another poor pass. We lose the ball. And Leeds United have the opportunity to counter once again. Helder Costa is in on this right-hand side. Plays it back to Calmea. Calmar. And we are 3-2 down. We're going to have to go for it. See if the boys can uh, get us back into this game once again. But uh, I think we're going to go out, boys, to championship opposition. And I mean, looking at the match stats, it's not deserved. But the game isn't won on match stats, unfortunately. Felix Correa on this right-hand side gets past his man. Shoots and hits the side netting. Time is ticking away. And we are going to go out of the FA Cup fifth round in heartbreaking fashion. There we are then. Sunderland 2, Leeds United 3. Massively, massively disappointing. We've got Newcastle United next. We've played Newcastle United three times so far in this save. We have been beat every single time. And our boys are going to be absolutely knackered for this game. Marcinski picks up a five-week injury. So we're without him coming off the bench for us. Matthias Jepsen did end up getting man of the match. Uh, mainly due to his goal. But uh, three days before Newcastle. I'll see you there. So only the one change coming into today's match. We bring in Ben Moore, Badi Gashil at centre-back for Benjamin Clark. who was a little bit suffering with uh, match conditioning and stuff. We do have Josh Tymon on the bench, of course. Our new signing in the summer who has made three Premier League games and got injured for six months versus Burnley. Um, <laughs> so he's returned and we will be looking to give him as much game time as we can to aid his uh, general rehab, let's say. Newcastle away from home next then. Let's see how we get on. We need a better result than against Leeds. First highlight of the game comes 11 minutes in. It's us on the attack down the right-hand side. Sergio Gomez and Rasmus Nissen. Christiansen combining. The ball is switched. Oliver Batista Meyer picks it up after a poor cross from the Newcastle. A poor clearance from the Newcastle defender. Munoz. Jacobsen. Oh, 23 minutes in. There's a corner for Newcastle. Good save by Jack Butland. That cannot be the highlight. It was too quick. So Butland's clearance. Is anyone going to bring it down? It might end up being another Newcastle opportunity here. John George Selby tries to switch the play to the right-hand side. We do win the ball back. Just don't give it away, boys. We work it way well. Sergio Gomez finds Esposito, who finds Abdul Kadir Omar on this right-hand side. What's he going to do with it? Back to George Dobson. There's Nissen Christiansen overlapping again on the right. He whips it in. Jakobsen's there. Oh. Relatively content with these match stats so far, keeping the majority of the possession and uh, having the majority of the chances as well. Badi Yashil finds Munoz overlapping on the left-hand side. He gets past his man. Oh, Geronimo Rolly, that is a hell of a save. Finally, Munoz had a decent strike there and he just couldn't quite find the back of the net. Batista Mayer with a corner. It's cleared. And that is the end of the first half. Newcastle United nil, Sunderland nil. We'll kick off for the second. Relatively happy with how things have gone. Our boys are struggling a little bit, particularly looking at the likes of Sergio Gomez. And of course, we don't have Marchinski to bring off the bench as he's injured for five weeks. So... Probably have to do some fiddling at around the 70 minute mark. But Munoz is in again. Drives past two men and again he shot his power. Yeah, we will look to make this change. Uh, Sergio Gomez will bring on Felix Correa 
in the attack and midfield spot. He's typically a right winger, but um, needs must. Now, Batista Maia picks up a knock on this left-hand side. We bring on Felix Correa. He's going on the left now. And we will bring on Bally Mumba to play in the attack and midfield role. Again, not something he's particularly comfortable with, but uh, we have to make do with what we've got. Another highlight now, 77 minutes in. Don't crush me hopes and dreams right now. Christiansen with a challenger falls back to the Newcastle player. Poor, poor player by them, which is fantastic to see from my point of view. Matthias Japsen brings it forward through the centre of midfield. Finds uh, Rasmus Nissen Christiansen on the right hand side. Can he get past these man? He whips it in. It's cleared by Isaac Hayden. Japsen keeps the ball alive. Munoz. Don't shoot. He tries to shoot. I've told him not to shoot. I'm sick of telling him not to shoot. And if Newcastle United score from this, it is entirely on Munoz. There we are. Benoit Badiashiel gives away a penalty. And that's because Ihan Munoz does not listen to player instructions. And he shoots when I've told him not to. There we are. Then Fabian Shah steps up to take the penalty. 11 minutes to go. Buries it in the back of the net. And Newcastle somehow find themselves 1-0 up. Yeah, just making sure it was on. Shoot less often was on. Yep. I think all we've seen him do is shoot. Nine minutes to go. We need a goal to get back into this. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. Joe Linton's in behind for Newcastle and shoots wide. Abdul Kadir Omar wins the ball. There, he sets away Esposito in behind. Esposito, man. Come on. Another highlight now. Seven minutes to go. Can we find our way back into this? Munoz brings it down the left-hand side. You owe me, son. If you shoot again, I'm terminating your loan. He crosses this time instead. And that's what happens when you don't shoot. You look for the pass rather than... I'm sick of banging on about it. Abdul Kadir Omar with his sixth goal of the season. Levels things up with seven minutes rain man on the clock. I want another one. I want the win. We will look to make another sub. Rasmus Nissen Christensen is struggling out there. We'll bring on Ivan. It will back up right back on the pitch. And uh, we'll stick with this highlight here. Christensen before he goes off. Oh, Abd what a save that was by Geronimo Rulli. Abdul Kadir Omar should have had his second goal of the game there. He's playing the corner though. Front post. Four minutes to go. We have ourselves another highlight. It's Newcastle on the attack. Oh, Lee Smooth set. Gets his sixth goal of the season. And puts Newcastle 2-1 up with three minutes remaining. And after all the work to get ourselves back into it, it is all for naught. And Newcastle United beat us for the fourth time running. Geronimo Rulli gets player of the match. Disappointing. So we need to bounce back in today's game. We are at home against Crystal Palace. They are currently sitting in 17th place in the table. So we could really, really do with a win. A couple of changes from the start 11 from last time. Josh Tymon comes in at left back. And Bally Mumba comes in in central midfield. First highlight of the game comes two minutes in. It's a free kick for us. Benoit Badia Shales on the end and hits the bar. Another highlight now. This time down the left hand side. Josh Tymon's cross is cleared quite easily by the Crystal Palace defence. But we rebuild. And we play in Christiansen down this right hand side. He's brought down by Jordan and Marvi. And that is surely a penalty. And Sebastiano Esposito will be the man who steps up to take it. Can he bury this one? Can he beat the Crystal Palace goalkeeper? He certainly does. And he puts us 1-0 up six minutes in. 18 minutes gone. And we have ourselves another highlight. Batista Meyer is on the wrong wing. But he runs it himself. And I'm happy to see it. Plays it in Abdul Kadir Omar out of Christiansen, whips it in, it's cleared. Josh Tymon, oh, that would have been an introduction back to their first team action. Five minutes to go in the first half. Crystal Palace are countering with Jonathan Leko coming down the right hand side, but oh, that was a bit of a dodgy pass. Uh, thankfully, we win the ball back, and hopefully, it's an attacking opportunity for us with Oliver Batista Meyer coming down this left hand side, feeds it through to Esposito. There's nobody in the box because that's where Seb should be. And. Uh, Unfortunately for us, the cross was poor. And Palace are once again on the counter. Gorjak. Yes, Christiansen, lad. What a challenge that was. And Abdul Kadir Omar is away. Come on, son. Can you bury this? I mean, it was a good try. Okay. Bit of a poor game so far from both sides, really. And um, They're keeping the majority of the possession, but we are having the majority of the opportunities. I'm not really pleased with how we're playing, so hopefully we step it up in the second half. Josh Tymon picks up a knock already. He will have to come off. We don't have Munoz on the bench. We're going to bring on Benjamin Clark to be our left back. He is not a left back by any stretch of the imagination, but he will have to do. Abdul Kadir Omar is breaking for us then 54 minutes in. He's only got Esposito ahead of him, so he's got a lot of work to do. He gets past one man. Is he going to whip it in? He is. Oh, it's cleared. Zaha brings it forward for Crystal Palace. Absolutely dances past there. Badia Shale and he sets away a Leko. Great challenge, Amavi. 
Jordan Amavi is that uh, equalise with 40 minutes left on the clock. Batista Mayo with a free kick. Oh, he goes for goal. What a save that is by Ward in the Crystal Palace sticks. We are going to get a corner out of it though. Batista Mayer will be the man to take it. George Dobson plays it out of Gomez. Come on. Oh, Gomez. You can tell why he just gets assists. 20 minutes to go. A draw is not good enough in this game. We really, really need three points. Abdul Qadir Omar has got Nissan Christensen on his right hand side. He plays it to him. He whips it in. Sergio Gomez is there. We've just been criticising his attack and play in terms of finishing. And then he's just shut me right up. I will take that all day. His fifth goal of the season. And that puts us 2-1 up with only 20 minutes to go. Omar and Christiansen combining on that right-hand side. It's a great cross by Rasmus. And uh, Sergio Gomez with a volley of dreams. We are going to make a couple of more changes with only 15 minutes remaining. Uh, we'll look to bring on Luis Montenegro. We'll take off uh, Esposito for that. And then uh, who else are we bringing on? We'll bring on Matthias Japsen for Bally Mumba in the centre of the park. Time is just ticking away. I will take this all day long. Five minutes remaining. Come on, boys. Just hang out for the final couple of minutes. And now we have it then. Sunderland 2, Crystal Palace 1. We had to fight for that, but we needed three points. And that's what the boys have been able to deliver. We have Brighton and Hove Albion coming up next. Away from home. They're currently sitting in 16th. Uh, another game where we've got to be targeted on three points. So our youth intake has come in. Unfortunately, not many gems here. So uh, not going to see any of them faces make the first team, unfortunately. So Brighton away from home now. A couple of changes to the start 11 again. Munoz and Jakobsen return to the starting 11. After uh, Josh Tymon and uh, Matai, uh, Ballymumma didn't really have the greatest of games last time. So we will kick off. Uh, see how we get on on this one. First highlight of the game comes inside the first minute. Aaron Moy wins the ball back for Brighton and he sets away a counter-attack. Or does Badia Shiel win it? He does. Matthias Jabson picking up the ball in midfield and we start from the back. Munoz picks up the ball on the left-hand side. Plays it back to Batista Mai. The ball's whipped in. Esposito heads it on. Good play by the uh, Brighton defender there just to put off Omar, uh, meaning he couldn't get the goal. Another highlight now, Matthias Jabson. Winning the ball back off proper after losing it initially. Batista Meyer shot is blocked and we do have ourselves a corner. Come on, boys. Can we get ourselves a set-piece goal? Batista Meyer will be the man to take it. He whips it in. Esposito is there. And Sebastiano Esposito gets his 26th goal of the season. And Batista Meyer gets himself another assist from a corner. Fantastic stuff and a great way to start the game. Another highlight now, this time coming down the right-hand side. Christiansen plays it in. Sergio Gomez keeps the ball alive after Brighton clear. He wins it again, second time in a row. He feeds it to Munoz on this left-hand side. Who whips it in. Esposito could have got his second. Another highlight now, Brighton on the attack in the box. Trossard with the header and Jack Butland with probably the best save we have seen all series. Absolutely fantastic. Only one minute ago before half-time, we have a final highlight of the first half. Hopefully, we can make it to 2-0 as George Dobson drives forward through the centre of midfield. Omar, he's got Christensen overlapping, but he doesn't need him. He goes for goal himself. And Omar, please start working on your shooting and training. Brighton, Nilsson and one then. End of the first half. Relatively content with how things went there. We will just G the boys up and get them back out for the second. First highlight of the second half comes 54 minutes in. George Dobson lose out, loses out to Trossard and he sets away Connolly in behind. And thankfully, he's not very good at finishing and Jack Butland keeps it at 1-0. 25 minutes left in this match. There is another highlight. Us down the attack on the right-hand side. Christiansen's brought down. The referee waves players on and he picks up the ball again. He drives into the box and goes for goal. Can't quite get his shot on target. We will look to make some changes with only 15 minutes to go. We'll just see what happens during this highlight though. Christiansen plays that ball in. Esposito is there at the front post. And I don't see any offside flags. So Esposito's second goal of the game and 27th goal of the season puts us 2-0 up. We'll take off Abdul Qadir Omar for Felix Correa on that right-hand side. We will also take off Rasmus Nissen Christiansen for Bali Mumba. And Sergio Gomez is not going to come off because we don't really have that many options. We can't take off. We'll bring on Benjamin Clark. That's what we'll do. We'll take off Nguyen Perez. He plays pretty much 90 minutes every single game. So giving him a bit of a 10-minute break will uh, actually do us pretty well. And with 10 minutes to go, we have ourselves another highlight. Gomez, well, he was bringing it down the left-hand side. He goes all the way back to Benoit Badiashale. 
Clark fades it to Correa, who finds Mumba bombing down this right-hand side. He cuts it back to Sergio Gomez, who goes for goal. It's a good save by Matthew Ryan. Corner for us, Batista Maia to take it. He plays it in. Nobody was jumping for that, even Benjamin Clark. And fortunately for Brighton, they do manage to get away with it and they come away. Florin and Donia. Thankfully, Munoz, a professional foul, I think we'll say that was. Um, with only a couple of minutes remaining, time is ticking away and we get ourselves an away win against Brighton. We're putting that Newcastle game well behind us now. Two wins on the bounce. I'm very happy with that result, particularly away from home. Uh, who I don't know who the next game is, but I will see you there. So Antonin, of course, who we loaned out in the January transfer window with an 11.28 uh, fee release clause if he makes five games. It looks like that is going to be activated by Sheffield United. He only has to play one more game. And getting £11 million for him will be absolutely fantastic. So thinking ahead to next season in terms of players and stuff, we do have a potential option here. Dramana Kiatia has come up available for around £5.5 million. He plays an attack midfield where, of course, we have Sergio Gomez. But one of the key areas we need to improve in the summer will be central midfield. And Sergio Gomez can quite easily play there. He's natural in that position. And then if we bring this boy in, he could be our new attack and midfielder. Great technicals, apart from his dribbling and long shots. But technique 17, passing 17, first touch 17 is great. Decisions of 17, determination of 20, flair of 15, vision of 15. I think he would be a very sensible purchase. So a £5 million bid has been accepted by San Lorenzo. We'll wait and see what his contract demands are like. He wants a star player. Uh, he might not end up being a star player in the squad, but whatever whatever gets him over the line, I'm more than happy to offer. He's not getting a minimum fee release clause. I'm going to exclude that from the negotiations. And we are going to uh, see if we can get him for around 50, uh, 40k per week. So 40 and a half k per week gets him on a four-year deal. No sell-on fee release, uh, sell-on percentage clause and no minimum fee release clause. I'll be more than happy to bring him in. I think he would become a great attacker midfielder with Sergio Gomez playing in behind him and speaking of Sergio Gomez he still has a 51 million pound minimum fee release clause to clubs in the Champions League I would like to get that out of his contract like right now and out or the agents negotiate and I've removed that from the discussion now he won't be able to bring it back in and uh, if we can get this contract negotiated we will be in such a good position in terms of Sergio Gomez that he is not going to be leaving the club due to a minimum fee. So if he does end up getting bought by a club, it will be on our terms, not on his agent's terms. I will be delighted if he signs this contract. And there's Dramana Chiarte has accepted our contract offer and he will be joining us in the summer, a Spanish attack midfielder who will slot into our first eleven quite nicely. I'm happy that's a relatively cheap deal as well for a, a good regen coming through. And there is Sergio Gomez committing his future to the club. I'm removing that dreaded minimum fee release clause. Absolutely delighted with that. So that's my idea by bringing in that other attacker midfielder. We'll play him as a Metzala, probably in the centre of midfield. He suits it down to the ground and uh, we'll bring in that other boy to play in attack and midfield. So our next game is against Manchester City. And it's a pretty big game of that as well. They're currently sitting sixth position whilst we currently sit in fourth. They are three points behind us with the game in hand. We are one point ahead of Newcastle sitting in fifth. Um, so we could really, really do with not getting beaten in this game. Whether that happens or not is another matter. Obviously, Manchester City are a fantastic club. Uh, Champions League would be a bit of a pipe dream for us. But if we can if we can keep keep in touch and distance going into the final five games as well of the season, I'll be uh, relatively content with that. Well, this is on an unusual screen. Usually on your Yo Man, I don't get to sign new contracts with clubs. So uh, we are going to get a new contract off Sunderland and commit our future to them for the long term. And there is the new deal signed, sailed and delivered. Let's see if they'll give us a bit more. 41? No. 38? <laughs> you can see the negotiating prowess by the Sunderland board. They've accepted 37. So there you are. We managed to get one K per week more than what we would usually have got. So here we are for the game against Manchester City. Only one couple of changes. Uh, Benjamin Clark and Josh Tymon coming into the defence as they have recovered from injuries and the like. Man City obviously is going to be a massive, massive test. If we can get a point out of this, I'd be delighted. Um, but I am not expecting much from it. Here we are. The first highlight of the game comes two minutes in. Omar wins the ball and sets away Esposito on the counter. Can he bury this? It's a tight angle. 
and Edison has a comfortable save. 11 minutes in now and we have ourselves another highlight. Omar on the ball for us down the right hand side. We're having to go back. Manchester City seem to be closing us down pretty well and pretty quickly. But we are maintaining our composure in the defence. Please maintain the composure. <laughs> Jack Butland with a big kick up finds Batista Meyer on his left hand side. He sets away Esposito. Tight angle. Don't shoot. He plays it back to Oliver. Don't shoot. <laughs> Don't shoot. Seriously, for FM21, I hope they fix that match engine. Coming down the wing, having an incredibly disappointing angle to shoot from, and yet every single time they take it, and it's so annoying. Another highlight now, 27 minutes in. Doesn't look like Manchester City are really getting involved in this game, as Batista Meyer runs over to the right-hand side and feeds it to Christiansen. Down to Jakobsen. It's a great block by the defender. We feed it back out to Christiansen, to Omar. Back to him. Can he get across in? He can. It's clear by Bastoni. Down to Omar. Great save by Edison. We'll stick with this corner. Sergio Gomez plays it in. And they're clear. Batista Meyer, can you keep it alive? Back to Gomez. Jakobsen's there. He's offside. Let's have a look at it in the replay. I mean, oh, it is offside, isn't he? Ah, that after that. Oh, it wasn't even him that was offside. And now we have it. Half time. Suddenly nil. Manchester City nil. We will take that all day long. Uh, the way the game is going is absolutely fine by me. I. Uh, if we can can get oh now I've pissed everybody off and now the performance is going to drop probably for the second half but we'll see we have our first highlight uh, two minutes into the second half Omar picks it up on the right Dobson plays it and Nissen Christensen with acres of space gets past his man whips it in Batista Meyer's there back post and Oliver Batista Meyer gets his fifth goal of the season and puts us one nil up with only forty five minutes remaining on the clock say it quietly Manchester City just forget that you're even behind. 20 minutes to go. Time is just ticking away. I have made zero changes so far in this game. And I am very reluctant to do so whilst the performance is going our way. Gomez in the box to Esposito. It's cleared by Man City. And is this going to be a counter-attacking opportunity for them? No, it is not. Seven minutes remaining. Ah, oh, should I have made subs earlier? I've been thinking about it since the second half started, really. Bastoni picking up the ball for Man City to Alvarez. Loads of space on that right-hand side for Aarons to stretch his legs. He gets to the byline, crosses it in. Tedic, Jakobsen, somebody clear it. Josh Tymon does eventually. Uh, but Manchester City keep up the pressure. Back out to Max Aarons on this right-hand side. Great block. Come on, boys. Chuck yourself in front of it. Dobson clears. <laughs> right, subs. We'll take off Gomez. We'll bring on Philippe Marchinski. We'll take off Josh Tymon. We'll put Benjamin Clark out there and bring on Brady Benoit Badiashid at centre-back. And we'll bring on um, Bali Mumba in the centre of midfield. Come on, boys. Only a few minutes remain. Three minutes remain. Two minutes. Oh, there's a highlight. I don't want any highlights. Benoit Badiashil with a big kick up. It does fall to us though. Abdul Kadir Omar brings it over to the left hand side for Oliver Batista. Don't don't do this. Come on, boys. Benjamin Clark, you have not got the crossing or shooting ability. Oh my dears. He almost scored. <laughs> we'll take the throw in. 30 seconds remain. We just need to wind down the clock. Waste as much time as possible, Christiansen. That's exactly what you're doing. 20 seconds remaining on the clock. This will be an absolutely huge win. One of the best wins of the season without a shadow of a doubt. We have a corner. Batista Meyer steps over it. He will aim it at the near post. That is the corner tactic we are currently operating within. Um, it is cleared by Man City, but Esposito was first to the ball. And there it is, full time. An absolutely historic win. Sunderland 1, Manchester City 0. We will take that all day, boys. So that is going to bring us to the end for today's episode. We ended off with six games remaining in the Premier League, sitting in fourth position with it all to play for coming into the running. So this is how it's going to go from now on with saving Sunderland. Uh, a good few games. That was only five games. It'll be six games next time. Uh, it will be all live comed. It will be. It's even as if I'm live streaming, just without the interaction. Um, let me know what you think of this sort of format. Um, it will be a trial period to start with. I'll probably do three episodes a week. I think of saving Sunland and uh, reduce your your amount of four. But yeah, let me know what you think of it. Do you want it to continue? Are you happy with it? Let me know your thoughts and feedback. But anyway, boys. If you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.